Happy Thursday, everybody. Thank you for joining us again for another Avidyne webinar on this beautiful Thursday afternoon, at least down here in Florida it is. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about GNS 430 to IFD 440 upgrade, kind of the ins and outs on, on what that looks like on a typical installation. Um, I am going to be going over some, some great features of the IFD, uh, talking about what the IFD, uh, specifically the 440, can do for your aircraft. Uh, this this format is going to be a little bit differently with with what we do. Uh, normally, in most webinars, I talk about all of the different uh, IFDs, the different flavors of IFDs that are available, all six of them, and what they can do. Um, if for this one, we're going to go a little bit differently. I'm going to talk more specifically about the 430 to the 440. Um, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that kind of translates over to the 5 series, the the larger IFDs that we do provide. Uh, most of the slides are going to be about the 430 and then um, how that translates into uh, that better operation, uh, upgrading to, to the latest and greatest technology. Um, so I'll be talking about that. And we're going to be talking about some options as well, right? Some improvements over the legacy systems, kind of how things have changed over the last several years or even several decades uh, in avionics to what they are today. And then we're going to be getting into a little bit of a comparison between uh, the 440 and uh, what what most people would say is is the the equivalent in in the industry in the space is the GTN 650XI. Um, I'm going to go over some resources. Well, I'll hit some frequently asked questions, questions that we get a lot uh, here at uh, at Avidine in tech support uh, through phone calls and social medias, and then we'll run through a quick Q and A. Um, real quick, just a reminder that uh, turn your speakers on. Um, this is being recorded, so if there's uh, anything that you missed or you want to see it again, um, since you're in here, you're going to get a replay webinar link in your email as soon as it's done. And we are going to have these available, this webinar available for replay on the dealer webinar, on the dealer uh, portal. If uh, I know I've got some dealers in here, um, it's going to be available on our main website, and it's also going to be available on our YouTube channel. So uh, if, if you need to go back, if you want to... Uh, uh, reference this webinar again, uh, you've got quite a few options on where to find that. So moving right along, if uh, if you or any of your customers, any of your friends are thinking about upgrading from the older GNS 430 or 430WAS, um, it, it's a great solution, a great idea, and, and this whole webinar is about explaining why that's a great idea. Just a little bit about the 430s, They're, they were great boxes, they still are good boxes. Um, they were designed back in the mid-90s, so the tech's a little bit old. All right, 25-year-old um, technology, the first ones came out in uh, 2001. They were certified back in 98. Uh, the WAS units were introduced in 2007. So uh, fantastic boxes. Uh, and they, they were amazing boxes back in the day, but that's where the state of technology was back then. Not a lot's changed since then, okay? Um, the legacy 430s, we can't upgrade those to WAS. If they're a non-WAS unit, you can't upgrade those to WAS anymore. Um, it, those, they're getting a little bit difficult and a little bit expensive to repair. There's not many parts that are out there nowadays as, as companies are, are kind of moving forward, moving along with, with newer and better products as we go along. Uh, the older units, they're just hard to support um, and, and that's okay, right? But those units are also out of warranty. Um, the difference there with uh, a product like ours and, and, and our company's uh, idea is that there's, there's no foreseeable end to the IFD product life cycle. They have been out for a while, uh, but we are continuing to support and improve and upgrade them as time goes by. As far as the the shape, size, and function of the box, uh, I think we've definitely got that locked in with the IFDs. So there's really no need or no reason for us to um, end the product lifecycle for our IFDs anytime soon. Uh, there's there's so much that we can do for those boxes, and um, we're still supporting them. So just a little bit about the IFD series. Um, some of the really key features that, that we have or we can provide you is, uh, the, I think one of the biggest things is our hybrid touch interface. What that is, is you can see how many buttons are on the IFD or on the IFD bezel. And we utilize hybrid touch by saying that you can do everything with knobs and buttons that you can also do with touch screen. Um, it, it's not, there, there's really no features on the IFD that you only have to do with touch screen or only have to do with buttons. Uh, you can really kind of tailor your your user experience to how you see fit. So, and, and we call that hybrid touch. It kind of combines the best of both worlds. It really gives you a choice as to what, uh, what you want to do and how you want to operate your IFD. 
we do utilize a page and tab user interface. And what that means, it's it's essentially a flat menu system. I'll, I'll get into some, some details later on, but I'll show you that the page and tab user interface is amazing because there's no home pages, there's no nested menus, no unfamiliar icons. Every every page has a name and it's it's spelled out and laid out right there on the IFD. And the cool thing about a, a flatter menu system with our page and tab user interface is you can get to any page in one or two clicks. Uh, like I said, you don't have to go back. In many cases, you're still keeping your map uh, up on your screen, so you're not really losing situational awareness there as well. Synthetic vision is standard. It's free in and included in all of our IFDs. And what I mean by synthetic vision, that is the exocentric, that's the up and back view that you're seeing here on these uh, on the IFD 540 and the 440 screens. Um, again, that's free and standard. It's an exocentric view of your own ship. You can see the plane icon there over a 3D map of terrain, obstacles, airports, traffic, METAR flags, all of that information is being displayed for you on your synthetic vision screen. And again, that is free and included with the IFDs. We also utilize what's called geofill that makes uh, entering your, your flight plans and airways super simple. It's based off of your GPS position. And as you're entering your waypoints, your airports, uh, nav aids, anything like that into your flight plan, it's always given you the best guess based on your position, what you're trying to enter. And we find that it significantly reduces the amount of button pushes, knob turns, and clicks that you have to do in order to enter that flight plan. We also have what's called FLTA, that is forward-looking terrain alerting. Think of that as it's almost like TAWS light. It's not a certified version of TAWS, but what it's going to give you is a lot of the same functions of TAWS um, as far as your terrain awareness and terrain alerting. And again, that's another feature that's free and included and standard in all of our IFDs. We also have built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi that is integral to the unit. There's no external dongles. Uh, there's no data cards. There's no, nothing like that. That does come with each and every single IFD. It's not an optional upgrade. It comes standard with all of your IFDs. What does that allow you to do? Well, it allows you to interface with your Mark 10 keyboard that comes free with the IFD. That gives you third-party app support with your favorite EFBs. And we do have a range of them. I'll get to those a little bit later. Um, and also with our IFD 550, that adds an attitude reference sensor, which will give you the egocentric view that you're seeing here on your screen on the very top, um, essentially your pitch ladder roll pointers and, and uh, an additional button and additional page on your IFD 5 series. Keep in mind that the IFD was designed to be a slide in replacement for your GNS. We think the size and shape of that box was uh, was fantastic enough to, to kind of create the IFD around that and really to make those upgrades really, really simple. So um, the cool thing about the IFD is it uses the same connector, the same tray as your GNS and uh, a lot of the same wiring. Now there are some optional features that just didn't come with the older legacy uh, boxes. If we want to add that, like our, our, uh, our terrain alerting or our audible alerts going into our, our audio panel, we would just run a couple of wires in, into that um, to get that feature from the IFD. It does support WAS and non-WAS installations at the setting and maintenance mode. So if you are replacing a non-WAS GNS and you either do not want to uh, upgrade to a WAS unit, uh, IFDs are WAS, we can turn that off. Uh, if we don't want to upgrade the antennas uh, or, or if we're going to do it later, we can just leave that off and it would send, it would be a non-WAS box in that case. But then again, all we're doing is we're just turning that WAS feature on or off inside the IFD. So it supports WAS and non-WAS installations. It supports all 160 IO interfaces of the GNS plus about 25 more. So uh, immediately, it's an, it's an immediate upgrade that brings you a ton of, of uh, features into your plane uh, in less than a day uh, for your upgrade. So a little bit about the knob and button functions of the IFD. So this is your, your basic layout of an IFD 440. Um, this is the full FMS GPS nav comm version. So it has integrated comm, GPS and all that. We do have some uh, non comm nav versions. Uh, I won't be getting into those today, uh, but this is the, the IFD 440. Uh, that we do see a lot of out in the field. So uh, starting from the top left, we do have a volume power and a squelch knob. This is a digital radio, so there's no squelch tuning. Uh, squelch either is or it isn't in, in radios like this. It's an auto squelch feature. Um, so that's how we would adjust the squelch there. 
Um, it is a volume knob for your radios, and if you hold that button down, that is your power knob for the IFD. Underneath that, we do have a COM and NAV swap button, uh, COM flip-flop button, call it what you will. That is what transfers your standby to active COM or your uh, standby to active NAV. That's your flip-flop button. Uh, with the four series, we do have three line select keys on the left. Depending on what page you're on, those functions do change, the, 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 the functions of the line select keys. Uh, in this case, uh, we're, we're on the nearest tab and it's toggling through the nearest airports and uh, we can set some filters there on line select key number one. The bottom left knob is a dual concentric with a push button uh, and that is our common nav tuning knob. If we turn that knob, uh, either one of those knobs uh, to the left or to the right, um, that's going to bring up our frequency nomination page and that's also how we're able to dial in megahertz and kilohertz for our radio. Um, our page function keys along the bottom are actually that not only are they just regular buttons to get to our different pages, uh, each one of them is a rocker button. So there's three centers on each of those buttons. So there's a, there's a center, a left, and a right. Uh, and I'll get into what those mean and what they can do for you uh, a little bit later as far as uh, dragging out some of your different pages and hiding some different pages. I'll get to that. Uh, bottom right is our USB port. Uh, that is where we do all of our database uploads and downloads, and it's just a standard USB port. It's not a mic. There's no micro SD. Um, you can upload and download information into or from your IFD with any standard USB stick that you get from any stores. Um, so that's how we do all of our data transfer, just with a standard basic USB port. And then we can also use that to charge our devices as well with that USB port. Now your lower right knob is, uh, again, that's another dual concentric with a push button knob. That's our context sensitive IFD knob or our FMS knob. So again, depending on what page that we're on, that's gonna perform some different, different functions and you're gonna see how intuitive that it is. On the right side, you're gonna see uh, four dedicated function keys, uh, direct procedure, enter and clear. Um, and, and pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, they, they have a specific dedicated function. And then the, the top knob on the right side, that's our nav source knob. That's got a couple of different things that you can do with it. If we turn that knob, it's gonna put the IFD into VLOC mode. If we push that, that's gonna put us into OBS mode and we can do a couple of different things with that. So a little bit more about our page and tab user interface. Again, we can see here that there's on the IFD 440, there's three different uh, page buttons, FMS map and auxiliary. Within each of those pages, we get to a couple of different tabs. So if I wanna get to my route tab, all I would do is push the FMS button and then push the route tab. It will default to the uh, FPL tab. So we don't have to get into that. Uh, one click, push the FMS button, boom, we're up on the FML. Uh, uh, FPL page. Um, our different tabs here, if I'm on the map tab, I can either look at my uh, kind of top down view from my map with a couple of different ways that I can present that information as well, north of, track up, heading up, as well as our synthetic vision uh, page. And then again, for our aux page, we have a couple of different options down there. We can uh, change our audio settings, utility settings to get into our calculators, our checklist. We have a setup for, for user options. Uh, we do have a system tab where we can get to our databases and view the status of those as well as our alert tabs. A little bit about synthetic vision. Again, the synthetic vision on the IFD is standard with the 440. Um, it dramatically enhances your situational awareness. It's got a full color display, shows you 3D traffic, terrain, obstacles. This is where you'll see your terrain awareness and your alerting. You see the two different pages here. This is our forward looking terrain alerting uh, that you see here on the bottom screen. It basically gives you a 30 second and a 45 second depiction of uh, terrain cautions based on a couple of different factors, uh, trajectory, altitude, speed, things like that. Um, so that's another great feature that uh, that is selectable and is free and standard with the IFD. We're not paying for any extra TAWS upgrades or anything like that. This, this stuff is what comes with all of those IFDs. A little bit about hybrid touch again, touch screen knobs and buttons. Anything you do with the bezel, you can do with touch and vice versa. Uh, some people that are coming from a legacy navigator are used to uh, buttons only because they, they, they've never been behind a touch screen uh, GPS. And so that's, that's another big benefit is, is maybe we want to segue into using a touch screen or we don't want to make the, the complete jump from button to touch screen. Um, hybrid touch really kind of gives you the choice of, of how you want to interact with your IFD. 
Now, another cool thing is geofill. That is an algorithm that, that will predict the intended identifier based on several different factors, whether that be proximity to your reference point or the facility type that you're trying to punch in. And it is context aware. So if we're doing this with a direct to, geofill is gonna uh, give you a suggestion based on the proximity to where you currently are. And then if we're doing waypoints, it's going to be based off proximity to the previous fix in your flight plan. So it's not always based on where you are exactly. If we're doing a waypoint, it's going to be based on what the last waypoint was. And that actually makes it really, really cool when you're plugging it in. A lot of times, if it doesn't already plug in what we're trying to plug in, the first couple of, of taps of your on-screen keyboard uh, or scrolling with your knob is going to give you exactly what you're looking for. And the cool thing about geofill like this is it's it's going to give you something uh, close to where you're at. Now we know previously uh, in this example we're flying up the eastern coast. If we were to type in um, HNK, uh, then it would give us the Hancock VOR, which is, is essentially what we're looking for. Uh, instead of uh, in a lot of legacy systems, we would see a waypoint for a, a a, a waypoint in Japan, right? And and that's not uh, that's not really intuitive, right? So Geofill fixes all of that. So what does that do for you? Well, that gives you a big improvement uh, when you're using your knob turns to enter your identifiers. It can reduce uh, some of that workload by about 75%, and gives you a, uh, an additional improvement when you're using the touchscreen keyboard because Geofill does work with that touchscreen keyboard as well. Uh, like I said many times, you only need to push uh, one or two keys before it fills in what you're trying to get to. We do have a next leg depiction on the map. So current leg is gonna be magenta. Um, the next leg beyond that, the next up is going to be that, uh, that magenta and white kind of candy cane indication. It lets you know what's coming up next, what to expect. Uh, really, really handy when we're doing holds. Personally, I'm a big fan of the synthetic vision view, that up and back kind of exocentric view. When I'm doing holds, uh, I, I find that really, really helpful. And then any future leg beyond that is gonna be depicted in white. So in this case, if we come up to the hold at BMI, that magenta and white candy cane is going to turn solid magenta and we're gonna to start to see the next leg down there become that kind of candy cane. And then beyond that, it's gonna be white. So uh, it, it works as you cross that waypoint, we see the, the, the next leg depiction change uh, based on where we are in our flight plan. It's really easy to view any information on, on any map. So as we're flying along and we're on our map page, we can tap any one of those icons or, or several of those icons on the map and we can get a lot of information as to what we're looking at. That works for special use airspaces, any airports that we see on the map, uh, VORs, uh, NDBs, and, and even weather. If we tap on that, uh, tap on those METAR flags, we'll see um, some weather information for that area. That depending, it, it, it is context sensitive. So whatever we tap on, we're gonna get um, a, different information based on what it is, whether it be an airport. We can see here we're we're looking at a METAR. Uh, in, in this case, we're looking at some airspace here. So depending on what we tap on the screen, we're going to get uh, that information pop up. It's really, really easy to edit your flight plan with the touch screen, and we do that with rubber banding. Um, if you want to learn more about rubber banding, I'm not going to get too into it uh, today, but if you want to learn more about rubber banding and how that whole thing works and how that fits into our, our uh, user interface, go back and watch my IFD advanced webinar. And we get to that by going to avidine.com slash training, click on the on demand replay and look for IFD advanced. Now, uh, dealers that are that are here, uh, that is available on the dealer portal. And then uh, we do have that also on our YouTube channel. So if you go to Avidine Avionics, uh, you'll see that uh, the IFD basics advanced and power user webinars that I did for the last three weeks are there uh, on our YouTube channel really, really easy to hold. And the cool thing about procedure preview is that you can take a look at what these are going to look like in your flight plan before you ever enter it into the flight plan. So if it's not something that you want to do, just simply don't do it. Hit the clear button back out. But you can preview what that hold's going to look like or, or what your entire flight plan is going to look like before you ever even enter it. Um, and, and that's a really powerful feature. Um, it increases a lot of that situational awareness. So uh, the cool thing about this is the IFD really allows you to easily set up a hold pattern. You can hold at any waypoint, direction, leg length. You can create 
a a waypoint and then set up a hold there. Um, it does have it's it does have uh, uh, published holds at at certain waypoints where you don't have to enter the the inbound radial leg length things like that. Um, if we are going on to a a published hold, so really intuitive, really great feature, um, really easy to specify a left right traffic uh, minutes miles inbound turns. You do all that through your your flight plan page. Airway entry is, is super easy. With procedure preview, it makes it even easier. Um, as we're building our flight plan, we, we go to a waypoint that's on an airway. We select the airway based on the list of, of available airways based on that waypoint, and then we pick an exit point. And what the IFD is going to do for you is it's automatically going to fill in all of the waypoints along that airway up to the exit point that you have selected. So we're not punching in a ton of different waypoints, especially useful if we're on a very, very long airway and there's you know, potentially dozens of, of waypoints along our route. Approach selection, again, is, is just as simple. Um, we're flying along, we're in our flight plan page. Uh, all we gotta do is hit the procedure key um, for that. It's gonna give us a list of approaches that are available for our destination that we've entered into the flight plan. We select an approach and then we select a transition for that approach. So it filters it down even more. Once we've selected, in this case, we're flying into FLG, we select the RNAP3. Uh, once we select that, it's gonna give us, hey, do you want, uh, you want FLG, you want uh, JUSO or OATS uh, for your fix. We select that and then automatically it's entered into the flight plan. It makes it really, really easy with the IFD to look at our source states. So if you look on the top right screen of the IFD, we can see our source state there, depending on, on what mode that the IFD is in, you know, just for, for regular modes or for different approach modes, we're able to see that. Anything in green is the active mode. You see the different courses, the, the different sources here, VLOG, GPS, OBS, and then our different approaches there. We also have a transition source state. So that tells us that the IFD is currently in an active state in green. However, uh, it is armed for whatever we are about to transition to. Now, the cool thing about this is that the IFD, if we are shooting an ILS, we can set that up to automatically tune and change our modes from GPS to VLOC for that uh, specific approach. And it'll let you know that it is armed. And then once certain capture criteria is met, it will then automatically transition over to that mode. So we, there's nothing that we have to do in that case um, to get the IFD into that mode to fly that approach. It'll do it automatically for you. And the IFD will also tell you what nav mode that it's in so that you know what your CDI deflection is going to be, whether it be in route, terminal, or approach mode. Of course, we know that there's different CDI deflections for those different modes. In route mode is going to give you a two nautical mile full scale, terminal one nautical mile, and approach mode 0.3 nautical miles or two degrees, whichever is less. But we'll be able to see that on the IFD, and we can set that up as a data block. There is a uh, a default data block where your nav mode will be on the left side underneath the com blocks, but we can edit that down even more and really set that wherever we want, you know, left or right side. But the IFD will tell you what nav mode that you're in for your CDI scaling. Com radio tuning is, is another one that is incredibly simple. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. The cool thing about the user interface of the IFD is I like to tell customers that it's, there's several different ways to do a single, um, uh, there's a single, a bunch of different ways to do a single process, right? Um, in this case, if I want to tune my radio, right? With the IFD 440, I can spin the left knob uh, and tune it just like you're used to with megahertz and kilohertz, you know, before and after the decimal. Um, I, there's going to be a frequency list that pops up where I can select it there. Or if I just tap the screen, I can bring up my on-screen keyboard where I can punch in the frequency and then hit enter once I do that. The cool thing about the IFD is that entering the leading one is optional. The IFD knows that you're going to be in the 100 megahertz range if you are uh, loading in a radio frequency. So we don't even have to load that in. That frequency fills in after a certain timeout. Uh, so we can punch in, we can hit enter, or we can just wait, and then that screen will go away and it loads it up into the standby. We can do that as well. Uh, but if we hit enter, what that's going to do is that's going to put it, that frequency that we loaded into the standby block, and then we just hit that flip-flop button to put it into the active frequency. Well, the cool thing about entering that leading one or or uh, not having to punch in that decimal makes it super, super, super 
easy. Uh, and, and try this if you've ever got IFD trainer pulled up or if you currently have an IFD or if you're in your friend's plan that have an IFD, load up a frequency, bring up this block and then hit two, three and enter. It's gonna enter one, two, three, zero, zero. It's also the CTAF from my home airport, Clearwater Air Park in, uh, in Clearwater, Florida. Two, three, five enter is gonna enter one, two, three dot five. We don't have to punch in all of those numbers. Um, it, it, it's aware, right? So we don't have to punch in that extra one. We don't have to punch in the decimal. Um, really makes it a lot easier for, for tuning radios and it makes it super, super fast. I did mention the frequency nomination list. When we turn that knob, it's going to bring up on, on the 440, it's going to bring up a frequency nomination list. With the 540, we have enough space, we can add an extra button. So there is a frequency button that we can push and it's going to bring this up. With the 440, it's automatic just by turning that knob. Gives you a couple different options for airport tab, an in route tab and a recent tab, and they have different meanings. That airport tab is going to give you frequencies on the ground. If you're within 10 nautical miles of its origin, it's going to give you a list of things. Like say you're on the ground, uh, you just punched in your flight plan, you've activated it, uh, you're getting a GPS position, it knows where you're at. It's going to give you a list of all of those frequencies at the place that you're at to make it super simple. Uh, and then en route is going to give you all the approach and departure control frequencies along the route that you have created, which makes it really, really handy. And then the recent tab is great, especially if you're using the same route to get back. It's going to give you all those recently tuned frequencies so you can easily recall those and go back to whatever frequency. So you're not really looking for those. Um, so that makes it super easy. You can touch any of those frequencies to, to transfer that to your standby window. We highlight it, we can hit enter, we can tap it on the screen, we can push the lower right knob to hit enter. Um, a couple different ways that we can get that loaded up into the standby. I like just double tapping on the frequency to load that up into the standby, then hit my frequency swap and now I'm talking on that frequency. So that will reduce a lot of tuning and communication errors, potential confusion. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I'm flying along and if I get handed off from one center to another, um, if I'm if I'm flying, I'm using my 440, I'll just move that lower left knob, one click to the right, uh, get to the en route tab. And I, what I will see is a list of those frequencies. And, and 10 times out of 10, I've never had an instance where it didn't happen to me personally. Um, one of those frequencies is, is one that uh, that that center is is handing me off to. So I turn the knob, I, I double tap it, and I hit the frequency swap. And now I'm talking to the next center um, along my flight. We also have IFD station ID readouts. So more than just the identifier, um, it'll actually give you a, a, a long readout of, of who it is you're actually talking to. Uh, makes it really, really simple. Um, it, it'll do that for your standby and your comm. You can see here I'm talking to uh, uh, Fort Worth and then the regional approach I have loaded up in standby. And I know that because I can read that and it says it. It's not, um, it's not, you know, KDFW or whatever, it's Fort Worth and then regional uh, read out in our, in our blocks there. So nav radio tuning is exactly the same way and it's just as simple to tune our nav radios. Push the left knob and that's gonna switch the display uh, to your nav frequency. Obviously there's not enough room on the 440 screen to bring up our active and standby comm and nav frequencies. So with the 440, it's really simple. If we wanna bring up our nav frequencies, just push that lower left knob one time and it's gonna bring up your nav frequencies. And then again, same thing as, you were, as if you were tuning your standby comm, touch the standby frequency window. It's gonna bring that, that numeric keypad for tuning that radio. And it works exactly the same way. I don't have to punch in all of the numbers. Uh, it, it knows I'm on the 100 megahertz band, so I could punch it in. I don't have to punch in a decimal. Uh, so it makes tuning those really, really quick. The great thing about the IFD is you have the ability to um, always have quick access to your map. And we think that significant significantly increases your situational awareness. In this case, I'm in the map page map tab, but I've also got the ability to bring out some data blocks over here. Um, so all I've got to do here, it's really, really simple. There's a couple of different ways I can do this. I can tap on that data tab that's on the right of the screen, and that's going to bring out uh, a list of data blocks here. The cool thing about this is it's completely customizable. It's scrollable. I can add several different data points or data blocks along the right side, and I can get some quick access to the information here. 
Um, in this case, that, that first one that I see is my next waypoint, the track distance and ETE to that next waypoint. Um, I do have a nearest airport bearing and distance. There, there's a bunch of different uh, data blocks that I can put there. Like I said, they are scrollable and they are completely customizable as well. But that's not the only way to bring out that data block. Another way that I can do that is, remember how I said those buttons have, uh, there's three buttons or yeah, three buttons in each of those um, down there. If I push the left or right side, and if I hold those down, that's going to bring out that data block as well. So it's great in turbulence. It's great if you've got, you know, big sausage fingers like me, and you can't quite get to that data tab. Just hold the left or the right side of any one of those buttons, the active page that you're on. It's going to bring out that data block tab when you're in the map page. If you hold that down, that's going to hide that data tab to give you more of a view of the map. And like I said, those data blocks are scrollable. They're fully customizable. You can change the order. You can change uh, what you see here. There's an entire list in, in the data block setup page. If, uh, if you want to check that out, check out my uh, IFD basics, and my IFD advanced webinars where I get into more detail on those. So when, we're, when we are in our FMS page in our FPL tab, we can also look at our map there as well. And we'll see our map now, which shows up on the left side, where all we've got to do is tap on the map tab to bring out our map, and it shrinks our flight plan a little bit. We're able to see that. Here's what that looks like. And then I can tap the FPL tab again to bring out my flight plan, where I'm looking at just my flight plan with more information. I can, I can edit things as I go. I can change uh, altitudes, things like that. In, in that, in this, I'll back up one. We can change all that information here. But quick, easy access to our maps. Now, while we are in the nearest tab here in the FMS page, we can see our map here, right? We can tap on it, we can hold this button down to bring our, our map. Um, but the really cool thing about the nearest tab is it gives us a couple of different options. Uh, we can look at a list of our nearest airports based on our position, uh, a list of different airports to our destination. Um, that is a helpful way to uh, go to an alternate. We're flying VFR, and weather doesn't look good, we need to divert. Uh, I'll use airports to destination a lot and kind of pick my airport from there. Uh, nearest VORs, nearest intersections, centers, and flight service stations, I can look at all those there. Now, also all those that they have a frequency assigned to them, I can quickly tune those, whether it be a comm frequency, a nav frequency. I can load that up into my standby, just like I did before. I'll double tap the frequency, or I'll highlight the frequency block, and I'll push enter, or I'll push the lower right knob. Either one of those is going to load that frequency into my standby block. I can get immediate bearing and distance for what I'm looking for. And then uh, there also is quick info. Uh, see this blue little icon here with the eye? I can bring that up and it's going to bring up my info tab with a whole bunch of different information about what it is that I have selected. If you want to know more about that, then go to my IFD Power User webinar and watch that. Uh, incredibly useful information, uh, really kind of gets into the weeds as far as what the info tab is all about and all the different information that you can pull up with your IFD and how quickly you can reference that uh, to, to be a safer pilot. So the nearest page and the nearest map side tab, again, I can take that same information. Like I said before, if I tap on the nearest tab or if I hold down the FMS button, it's going to either show or hide uh, that nearest tab. So I'm, I've always got quick access to my map for that situational awareness, and I think that's incredibly powerful. And then again, as we are selecting, if we do have that map brought up and I'm scrolling through my different list of, in this case, nearest airports, what we're gonna see on the screen, if you see here, is KXBP is actually highlighted on my map, so I can, I can get a quick reference as to where exactly it is. Now, I've got bearing and distance here, but I've also got uh, where it is on the map. So I can kind of, it's, it's like a quick little look. And as I scroll down, that little blue dot, that cyan dot is going to change based on what I have highlighted in my list. So really, really cool feature there. And then another great feature that I really like, especially for the IFD 440s, is the mini flight plan format. And what that does, is that allows us to kind of shrink down our waypoints when we're looking at our flight plan. And maybe I just want to see, uh, time bearing and, and then time bearing distance and time i can do that by shrinking that down turning on my mini flight plan format and now i can see more of my waypoints along my flight plan especially with uh, 
the smaller screen compared to the IFD5 series uh, that the 440's got. So I'll turn mini flight plan on or off, and you can see the different choices here. On the far left of the screen, you'll see the mini flight plan is turned off, so I have the most information available. And then on the right side, my mini flight plan format is turned on, and you can kind of see what that does to the waypoints in our flight plan page. I want to talk a little bit about wireless connectivity and, and what the IFD can bring. So all of our IFDs do come with a free Mark 10 Bluetooth keyboard, and that's really the, the sole purpose of the Bluetooth functionality in the IFD. What that does is, is it's a full remote control for your IFD. Um, helicopter guys absolutely love it. Um, if you have a passenger in the back, that's, that's lightened some of the workload for you, or uh, maybe your passenger, right? You can change your page and tabs. You can do all of your comm nav frequency tuning. You can edit your flight plan. You can zoom in and out with your map. There's a lot, a lot of things that you can do with that keyboard. Um, it is completely optional. You don't have to use it, but the cool thing about the IFD is they do come with one. So it uh, just gives you another option. And then another benefit is wireless connectivity is free and standard with all of our IFDs. They come integral to the boxes. There's no extra dongles. There's no data cards. There's, there's nothing that we have to wire in. Everything is, is uh, integral to the unit. With our wireless connectivity, that gives you a list of options for interfacing uh, your iPad with a bunch of different EFBs. Uh, I've got a list of them down here. Um, because what we do is we make our wireless SDK available to any third-party app developer out there, whether they be in the Android world, whether they be in the iOS world. If they're developing an EFB and they want to work with us, we'll make our SDK av available to them uh, so that we can work together and, and um, their customers can enjoy uh, full functionality with the IFD with their EFB. We do have our own app. Um, the, the thing that I want to talk about, uh, IFD 100, um, kind of what it is and what it isn't, um, what, it, what it really is is a, it's a big remote control for your iPad, right? It, it kind of gives you another instance of the IFD in the cockpit. It doesn't mirror your IFD. It can give you the ability to look at a different page of information as it gathers information from a single IFD, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, what I like to use it for personally in my plane is I like having the uh, synthetic vision up and the flight plan page in an IFD. I like having a big screen. I like having a big, uh, a big map right there in my face on my iPad, on my yoke, and that's what I love to do it for. Uh, I can tune all of my radios with the IFD 100. There's a ton of things that I can do. Um, I can look at my ADSB traffic and weather that comes in either from a certified receiver or from a wireless device. Uh, I can look at all that in there. So it's really a, a it's not an EFB. I'll tell you what it's not, right? It, it's really meant to complement those third party apps and those EFBs that you know and love and that you're used to. Uh, it essentially acts as a remote control. Uh, I do love to run them split screen together. Uh, this is a really popular one. You have uh, an EFB on the left. I do have a picture of four flight, but you can use any one of those EFBs that we interface with on the left side. Running IFD 100 on the right with any one of those iPads out there that does support multitasking. So uh, really big benefit, especially for 440 customers because uh, screen size is is kind of at a minimum uh, with with just the the smaller nature of an IFD compared to a five series. Um, so a lot of guys can can benefit from this as well. And the cool thing is that you can still get your Jefferson charts on your IFD 100 or on your EFB. Uh, we do have that ability there. So we can download uh, Jefferson charts and we can display them on IFD 100 while you are running uh, your favorite EFB, uh, whichever one that is that you prefer. Uh, flight plan entry is really, really simple with the IFDs. Um, this is just one, one example. Um, if we were to, add, to load this into a leg, legacy navigator, we are, we, are, we are actually getting into the couple of hundreds of button pushes and knob turns. We do this with the IFD. Um, I've gotten that down to 60 knob clicks and buttons. Uh, I've counted. <laughs> Um, I, I can do that, or if I'm using hybrid touch, um, I can enter this entire flight plan with 24 different um, either taps of the screen, individual clicks of the knob, or pushing of buttons. So it's a really, really intuitive thing, um, and it really reduces that workload, and, and, and it really kind of speeds up the process of, of entering those flight plans, and especially making those changes on the fly. 
Uh, one of the things that I do want to do is I want to get into a little bit of a, a comparison between the latest and greatest things that are that are out there today and kind of show you, um, <clears throat> kind, of, kind of highlight where the benefits lie uh, with the IFDs themselves. So there are a lot of key differences with uh, uh, one of the most popular navigators out there, the uh, the GTM 650XI. Um, so just a list of kind of what's what we bring to the table and and the, some of the differences out there. Um, we do utilize a, a page and tab user interface that allows you to get to any page in one or two clicks. Um, the GTN, while they are amazing boxes, they do have a nested menu system. Um, it's it's a it's a graphical nested menu thing. Each of the functions is a separate app. You have to go back to a home page, and uh, some people are used to that. Um, others would would see that as, as a little bit of a hindrance. Uh, so it really kind of depends on on how you like to to interface with your IFDs uh, or with your navigators. Uh, we do utilize hybrid touch, which is touch screen knobs and buttons, and then the GTN mostly touch only. Um, I know that the XIs have have added some other buttons. Um, and there's there's some other things that you got to do there. I mean, you can get it done, but uh, we definitely think that 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 our user interface is, is much easier if we were comparing the two. Uh, we do have forward-looking terrain alerting is a free and standard enablement. To get that equivalent in the GTN, it does require a TAS B upgrade. There really is no FLTA that's standard with those. Uh, so in order to get those same features, uh, you would have to buy the TAS B upgrade. And that's about an $8,000 upgrade right there where ours is uh, our FLTA is non-certified, so not everybody needs uh, TAWS. So if you're just the, you know, like me, you're a Part 91 guy, you're you're flying around for uh, for fun, you're not working for for a 135, you don't need TAWS. Uh, we do have the free and standard FLTA available for you that does not come at any additional cost. Uh, we have Geofill, Garmin has FastFind. Um, they're essentially the same. We think ours is a little bit more innovative, but uh, both of them are great features. We do have graphical airway building and procedure preview, uh, which allows you to kind of build your flight plan uh, graphically. You can look at that at that flight plan as you're building it, whereas the GTN, you know that um, you kind of have to build it before you can see it. Um, so that's that's where I think the procedure preview kind of comes out on top and really kind of is is much more beneficial in that case. Uh, we do have an integrated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's free, standard, included with all of our IFDs. They're built into the boxes. Uh, the GTN, you got to buy that, right? That's an, that's an add-on. You got to pay for it. It's not standard. If you do want wireless and Bluetooth connectivity, you do have to buy that. Um, and it does give you some fewer choices of wireless devices. It only gives you kind of uh, two options there. Uh, as, as far as uh, EFBs, things like that. And the huge, huge benefit is that the IFD is a direct replacement for your GNS. It uses the same tray, same wiring, so um, uh, same, uh, the same uh, hole in your panel, right? Uh, we're reusing a lot of that same stuff. We do, if you're, if you're doing a forward fit, we do have the tray, we do have connectors, and all that stuff comes free with your uh, IFD purchase, uh, as does um, the, the uh, competition, but um, we're not redoing our panel. We're not completely rewiring it. So um, that translates to uh, an even bigger cost savings when we are upgrading from a legacy navigator. Uh, we're not ripping the entire panel apart and rewiring everything. So we do find that as, as a, a benefit. Um, so just comparing the two here, our page and tab user interface, again, we can get to virtually any screen in one or two clicks. Um, uh, Garmin does have a the uh, icon-based homepage. Um, having to go back and then and then plug that in, maybe the uh, icons may or may not be uh, familiar. Um, we do find that the page and tab tends to be a little bit more intuitive. Uh, hybrid touch, way more uh, buttons. Uh, we can do anything with the buttons as we do with touch screen. Uh, we do find that is is very beneficial as well. Um, Geofill, like I said, uh, Geofill, FastFind, a lot of them, there, there's a lot of similarities there, um, and, and that is a, a great thing for pilots. Uh, we do think ours is, is a little bit more intuitive, um, and, and we can reduce a lot of that button pushing with the, the Geofill uh, in the IFDs. Uh, 3D Synthetic Vision, again, comes free and standard with the IFDs. Uh, right now, there is no synthetic vision on the display on the, the GTN navigators. Uh, the airway flight planning and preview. Uh, we have the ability again to to preview our flight plan before we ever enter it. 
we can build it. If we don't like it, we can select something different. And we'll see that, that, um, that flight plan change as we are building it. Uh, whereas with the GTNs, of course, you know, you kind of have to build it before you can see it. Then you can look out and, and kind of see how we've built that flight plan. Um, integrated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Again, uh, there's no dongles, no data cards with the IFD. Everything is built in and it comes as free and standard equipment. Uh, there's no, it, it's not an optional upgrade. It, it comes standard with it. So, and then everything is built in um, and yeah, it's, it's free and standard with the IFDs. Um, if we're doing database updates, our IFDs do come with a free uh, branded USB stick. We do get this question a lot. Oh man, you know, I, I lost my Avidyne USB stick. How much is it going to cost to get a new one? Well, I mean, we, we do sell them, but um, if, if you really, if you need something right now, man, just go down to the store, grab your USB stick, make sure it's eight to 16 gigs. You can format it to FAT32 and, and that's essentially the same exact thing. There's nothing proprietary, there's nothing special. We don't tell you that you have to use the Avidyne USB stick. Uh, if you want to have multiple ones, yeah, just grab a bunch of USB sticks. They're not expensive and there's nothing special about ours. Uh, the ours are just branded with the logo. So um, you can simply just get it done with a simple USB stick. Uh, whereas um, the other guys do have um, approved data cards that, that can be a little pricey. So um, we do like the USB sticks and, and that works out great for our customers. We do have the Mark 10 Bluetooth keyboard. Um, there's really nothing else out there on the market like the Bluetooth keyboard that we do have. Uh, they do come free with every IFD and then all the same functions on the keyboard you can do with the IFD and vice versa. Uh, we do have the IFD 100 for full remote control. Again, it's not an EFB. It is a, a remote control. It's a second instance of that IFD. It gives you kind of a big glass version of your IFD in the cockpit. Um, there's really nothing uh, equivalent uh, to IFD 100 uh, out there on the market for other navigators. And we do utilize more third-party apps. There's a ton of customers out there that maybe they're not a four-flight guy. Uh, maybe they like, maybe they're big on FlyQ. Well, we have a huge customer base uh, out there that flies the FlyQ. Um, a lot of Flight Plan Go customers, a lot of guys use Cloud Ahoy out there, not as an EFB, obviously, but uh, flight schools they used to track it. I know when I was going through flight training, and I'm, I'm showing my uh, my young age here, but I used Cloud Ahoy heavily when I was going through flight training. Uh, Sky Demon out in Europe, and then of course Oz Runways out in Australia. All of those apps interface with the IFD because we've made that SDK available to them. We've worked with them to, um, to get the IFD functionality into their EFBs. So we can now offer those as, as more options for our customers. Whereas with, uh, with the GTN, you're really kind of limited to Garmin Pilot and ForeFlight. Uh, two great options. Garmin Pilot's a great app. ForeFlight is, is an amazing app. Um, but it just kind of limits your options there. Now, here's a question that everybody's been asking. Okay, you know, how much? Well, I mean, kind of here it is. Uh, if, if we're matching apples to apples as, as far as feature sets, this is really what you're looking at. Now, these prices are in MSRP. Um, if we're going to match the features of, of what the IFD comes standard with and what the other guys don't, uh, we do see a big price difference at the very start as far as base model. Um, but we start tacking on features, that's when the price really, really starts to go up. And the biggest thing is, is uh, FLTA. FLTA does come free and standard with the IFDs. Um, that is not the certified TAWS, but it gives you a lot of that same TAWS functionality and features such as your terrain alerting. Now, if you were to just um, buy a GTN without that TAWS upgrade, you wouldn't get that. And that is an almost $8,000 upgrade. Uh, wireless connectivity, again, that's free and standard with the IFD, whereas you're buying a $1,500 uh, card to get that that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality. So you can really see how the prices do change um, if we're matching feature for feature uh, between the two. Um, and, and that's where we do find a, a, a big benefit. And that's before we ever even get into the um, actual physical replacing of, let's say, a, a legacy GNS into the panel. If we're having to do a whole nother tray, whole more, you know, whole nother set of uh, connectors, rewire, uh, it's a lot of labor, it's a lot of, it's a lot of added costs. So things really start to add up at that point. And you kind of see that there's, there's not much uh, change in price when we start looking at what it costs to buy and then install uh, something like an Avidine IFD. And uh, we do have the best warranty in the game. We do have a four-year warranty. 
Um, it does start with the standard product warranty, you know, one year for purchase, one year for registering, and then the years three and four for the aeroplan. Aeroplan is completely optional. Um, and load it up if, if, if you want to. Um, any information that you want to know about this, reach out to us. Uh, I'm not going to get into too detail on any one of these slides <clears throat> on this uh, webinar, but if you want to know more about that, just go to avidine.com, click on the support tab, go into warranty information, or go to our knowledge base. It'll give you a whole bunch of different information. And of course, always give us a call, um, reach out to us, reach out to our warranty administration team. Uh, pilot support at avidine.com if you have any questions on that. We'll be happy to answer those as well. Just want to remind you, the 440 is a sliding replacement for a GNS. Um, if you're currently flying with a 430, it's it's really, really easy to upgrade. Um, we can use the same tray if we just if if we choose to. Uh, we can put in an entirely new tray, but we're not we're not cutting a panel. It is pin for pin. Uh, the, the the pin locations are exactly the same. Uh, if we are going to from a non-WASP 430 to a to the WASP functionality of the IFD, we're really just throwing in another antenna. There's a couple different considerations depending. I'm seeing a lot of stuff in the chat about a GTX 345, and I see uh, a lot of our guys have already answered those questions. We are repinning a GTX 345. Uh, we do talk of that slightly differently, um, but you're doing nothing more than just moving a couple of pins around. So uh, for the most part, so it's a really, really simple, straightforward upgrade. Usually the most that we see with those replacements is, is really just uh, uh, antennas if we're going from non-WAS to WAS and then circuit breakers. Um, another, another big thing is we're in stock and we're shipping right now. We have plenty of product in stock. There's no lead times. Uh, if you drop a PO today, your dealer drops a PO today, um, we're going to get that out in the next day or two. Uh, so we do have product in stock and, and everything's made right here in Melbourne, Florida. So just a couple of resources here that I want to run through. Um, we have several different online resources uh, to, to answer all of your questions, uh, whether they be on the different social media pages, uh, a bunch of different training resources. I'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, one, our first one is avidinelive.com. That is the forum, the official forum. Uh, a lot of us are very active. Our engineers, myself, uh, our sales team, all of them are very active on this forum. Uh, so any questions that you ask, we're going to get to you. Uh, it's a great place for uh, fellow Avidine customers to kind of uh, huddle together and and, and just uh, be social uh, together. So AvidineLive.com is, is a great forum. We do have the Michael Bauer book, Flying with the Avidine IFDs, written by by the late Michael F. Bauer. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he did pass away in uh, in February. Um, so that that was, was very unfortunate. It's very sad. But um, um, this is an amazing book. He left us with an absolutely amazing book. And uh, we we definitely uh, appreciate him for all the hard work that he put into this book. Uh, it does offer some scenario-based training. Uh, it is based off of three of the six different versions of the IFD, the 550, the 540, and the 440. Um, you can follow along with the IFD trainer app in a lot of his lessons. The book is available if you're not an Avidine IFD customer. That is available on Amazon.com. But for all of your current customers, we do offer a free copy provided with your IFD purchase. Just reach out to Pilot Support, give us your tail number and an address, and then we'll reply back with a tracking number so you can get your free Bauer book. We have a lot of resources on our website as well. We got several training videos, uh, training videos that, that we have created to follow along with the Bauer book to kind of give you just a video representation of the lesson that, that Mr. Bauer was, was teaching at that time. Uh, a lot of different training videos there. And then uh, our webinars on demand. So this webinar and any other webinar that we've ever done is available for on-demand replay at avidine.com. If you just go to avidine.com slash training, or you go to the support tab, click on avidine training, scroll down to on-demand replay, you'll see all those webinars on demand there. All of our webinars are available also on the dealer portal uh, for all of our dealers that are listening in on the chat today and as well on our YouTube channels. So uh, a lot of different places that you can look at our webinars and, and recall them. Our customer knowledge base is is something that I like to push a lot because it's quick access to a lot of information that our customers uh, ask on on a regular basis. It's it's basically frequently asked questions. There's a lot of great articles there. We're always changing them, updating them, adding to them uh, on our knowledge base. So if you go to avidine.com, you click on pilot support at the top, it's going to take you directly to our customer knowledge base. And then we do see a list of top articles here once we get to the page. That's ever-changing. 
depending on how many people have, have searched for that article or, or have viewed that article. Um, but we tend to see a lot of the same ones uh, stay up there, such as our Jeppesen pricing for Avidine equipment, um, how to um, uh, set up with four flight, map orientation stuff, 60 day Jeppesen trial, things like that are, are pretty common articles. Um, so all the information that you're looking for uh, can be found there at our customer knowledge base. And it is it is a search engine. So we just you know plug in a couple of keywords and see what comes up. Gary Reeves, a good friend of ours. He's a master instructor. He wrote an amazing book, Single Pilot IFR Pro Tips. He's got a, a range of different uh, training opportunities. He is our national training provider. Uh, he provides a lot of great online training, uh, some, some in-classroom stuff, and he does offer a, a three-day training in your own aircraft. Um, so if that's something that you want to do, if you really want to learn how to master the IFD, uh, Single Pilot IFR, uh, Gary's your guy. Visit pilotsafety.org, see what he can provide for you. Um, and again, it's, it's another great resource. Our IFD trainer is a free play simulator for the iPad. If uh, you go onto the app store and you download IFD trainer, you see there's two different ones um, and, and all of them are free. Uh, we do have a separate trainer app for X-Plane. If you have a home simulator, we can plug into X-Plane as well, and uh, you can use trainer for that. But it's an emulator that will emulate all six different versions of the IFD from the 550 all the way down to the 410. We can select that. We can log in with our Jepson credentials and get current databases if we want to run trainer with, with the latest Jepson databases. So a lot of really great things that we can do there. It's, it's a great uh, at-home IFD emulator. Social media, we're all over social media. We do have the Avidine Pilots Club Facebook page, which I'm very active on. I'm a moderator on there. Uh, Instagram pages, our different YouTube channels. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter. So a uh, bunch of different places that we can go uh, to interact and, and get all your latest and greatest news and, and information uh, from Avidine as well. I do want to run through a couple of frequently asked questions because we do get a lot of questions um, throughout. Uh, about the IFD, what it interfaces to, uh, a couple of different things. So I'll run through a couple of those. So one of the questions that we get, especially from, from new customers, and maybe they're coming from a, a, a legacy navigator, uh, what kind of antennas need to be installed? So we do have a knowledge base on this, and this is also in our installation manual, which is currently, as of today, is in revision 22. It is an interactive installation manual. Uh, it's it's the first of its kind in general aviation, and all of our dealers, obviously, they have access to that. Um, if you are an experimental aircraft builder um, uh, and you're, you're putting in an IFD, obviously, you need the latest uh, installation manual, so please reach out to us. We'll, we'll be happy to give it to you, um, but all that information is going to be laid out in the installation manual as well as our knowledge base. Um, this is a list of the most common uh, GPS WAS antennas that are out there available on the market, and uh, this table is also in our IM. So these, this is a list of approved antennas, but uh, it's not an all-inclusive list. As long as it meets certain TSO requirements, um, then it can be used as a WAS antenna. And we're just making sure that we're using the right type of, of, uh, of cable as well. What else is it? Uh, what else is the 440 uh, compatible with? Can I plug this into my XYZ? Um, yeah, well, we've got a knowledge base for that, and all of this is also in our installation manual as well. If we want to find that, um, like I, I, I said before, go to our knowledge base, click on pilot support at the top of avidine.com. Um, that is a top article, uh, IFD compatible equipment. That'll give you a full list of everything that is at least in our installation manual as an approved interface per hour. STC. A lot of these interfaces live in other installation manuals, depending on which STC that they've been uh, approved with. So don't think that uh, this list is all inclusive and there's no other things that we can interface with. This is just the ones that we've proven and, and added to our uh, STC for the IFDs. Okay, what about a GTX 345 and a GTX 330ES? Yes, um, the GTX 345 and the 330ES is an approved um, uh, interface. The IFD is an approved GPS position source. It's in our STC. It's in our installation documents. Uh, and we can also display ADSB traffic and weather from the GTX 345. Remember what I said, if we are coming from a GNS, we do talk to the GTX 345 a little bit differently. Um, if you actually go to our one of our YouTube channels, we do have an interface video, a training video on how that 
whole interface works, how it's supposed to be wired up. So if you are a pilot um, looking to upgrade to an IFD and you wonder how all that works, you can go check out that video as well. And we'll show you exactly the kind of ins and outs and the hows and whys uh, that works. But the, the short answer, yeah, we absolutely interface to that just fine. Currently, I've got a 430 with an Aspen 1000. Any config issues? No, it's pretty straightforward. If the 430 is working fine, the 440 is going to work even better. If you have an ACU installed, uh, that is an Aspen product. Uh, there may be some minor wiring changes. Get with your dealer, get with your installer, um, and, and they'll be happy to explain it to you. Reach out to us, tech support at avenide.com, and we can give you that information as well. So uh, no, no real big issues there. I added an Aspen to go with my existing 430 Waz. I'm looking for an upgrade to a 440 with a GI275 backup. Is there any issues? No, there's a lot of folks out there right now that are that are running an IFD with a GI275. Um, they've had to do it on a field approval. Um, if they, it, there's a couple of different considerations there. Uh, if a field approval wasn't needed, a lot of times they, they had the 275 in there already and then they did the GNS swap. Uh, so then we use that as a TSO replacement uh, for the GNSs. So a couple of different things, but um, I know a lot of people were wanting to put that in after the fact. Um, don't worry, that's coming in 10.3, the, the approved interface. Um, look back on our, our what's new with 10.3 webinar uh, that we came out with a couple of weeks ago um, to explain some of that as well. As far as the Aspen goes, yeah, there's no issues with Aspen. They're great industry partners. We talk to those guys all the time. Um, they're, they're great to work with. Um, so no no worries there. Okay, what about me? I got dual G5s, I got a JPI 900, I got a flight stream. Uh, is an IFD gonna work if I put it in here? Absolutely, take that flight stream 210 out because IFD does have integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You don't need that flight stream anymore. Um, the IFD works great with the, the JPI. Uh, any one of those JPIs, the uh, Electronics International products, uh, we'll, we'll send and receive all the information that, that is required of them uh, to work with that just fine. You even get fuel range rings on the IFD. And then the 795, again, that, that works the same. It's an approved interface. It's in our installation manual. So all that stuff's going to work as well. I've got a 430 uh, that needs repair. I'm looking to upgrade it. Um, I've got a KT-74, a Century 2B autopilot. I'm looking to upgrade to G5s. What do I do? You know, can I do it? Can it happen? Absolutely. There's no problems with the KT-74 uh, as a GPS position source for that. That pairing is covered under the STC as well as Bendix King's STC with the Aeronav. <clears throat> uh, the Aeronav, as it, if you're not aware, uh, is an Avidine product. It's rebranded as Bendix King, and there are some benefits to that. Um, I think I, I've got a couple of slides here where I get into that, the, the Bendix King branded uh, Aeronavs. Uh, it, another another great solution in the industry. Uh, the G5s, they are a proven interface with our interactive install, installation manual, as well as the Century 2 autopilots. I have a 55X and I wanna make sure that 440 slide in is gonna give me full functionality, just like my 430 does. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's there's hundreds of aircraft out there flying with 440s and an STEC 55X. Um, and then the IFDs, uh, they work great with any size iPad. Uh, me personally, I've got an iPad Pro 11 um, that I run in in uh, landscape. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Uh, works with an iPad, iPad Mini, iPad Pro that runs the latest uh, version of IFD 100, and it works great with uh, third-party EFBs for flight and and the like. Do you interface with the HDX? Absolutely, absolutely. The IFD is the most popular IFR navigator solution for the Dynon HDX system. Um, it works beautifully. We've got a ton of different aircraft out there. Um, it's, it's a great, great matchup. It's a great partnership in the industry. Um, the, the Dynon HDXs are, are amazing screens and they work great with the IFDs. Okay, so here's a question about the Benix King. Is it better to get your version or the Benix King Aeronav? Well, really, there's there's no difference, right? Um, all of those are made right here in Melbourne. Uh, it's just rebranded for the Benix King. They've got a different, you know, splash screen, a different logo on the front. It's essentially an IFD, um, so it's it, it's the same product, right? Um, the benefits for that is uh, if you're into brand commonality, uh, you have an AeroView Touch and you want your navigator to say Bendix King? Well, absolutely. Then, then Aeronav is your solution. Um, 
as well. So uh, great product, obviously, um, but uh, that, that is another option. Okay, so databases is another one that we get. Um, how much are they? Uh, do you need a subscription? Yes, yes, absolutely. The IFBs do utilize JEPS and databases. There is no quote Avidyne databases. Uh, we we do utilize JEPS in for all of our, our database needs. Um, if you're wondering about pricing for that, um, we do have a knowledge base article for that. That's Jefferson pricing for Avidyne equipment. Again, avidyne.com, click on pilot support at the top. And that is a top article. It's always uh, the top article, Jefferson pricing for Avidyne equipment. That'll give you a list of different tables as to uh, what some of those bundles look like, whether you have a full Avidyne suite with Integra PFDs, uh, dual IFDs, single IFDs, with charts, without charts. Um, so, and that information was updated back in December, and that is the current price list uh, this year uh, from Jefferson as well. Well, we also get a lot of things saying, hey, man, you know, the, the Jefferson uh, data bonds, they're, they're kind of expensive. And um, actually, they're not. Now, I'll explain why. So, um, as you know, uh, uh, Garmin does have uh, one pack, and I think it's a great solution. But uh, when you look at the different prices there for single or dual IFDs from, from Jefferson, even with charts, uh, we're still coming in significantly underneath just your basic America's uh, standard one pack with flight charts. I mean, you, the, the, the proof is right there. So, um, you know, we, we know Jepson is an amazing product. That's that's why we use them for, for our databases. The, the ability to geo-reference everything is all there. And uh, it's really a fant fantastic product. So again, if we're, if we're doing a side-by-side -side here, um, the, the the Jefferson uh, database bundles still come comes underneath uh, significantly to to other uh, solutions out there. So uh, I, I hope that kind of puts that that to bed a little bit as far as uh, uh, database pricing. So that was really essentially it. Um, I'll open the floor up. I see uh, I see my folks in the chat. Brian and and Will did a, a an amazing job fielding your questions. It looks like we've got a ton of them answered, guys. If there's anything. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it open for a little bit and see if there's there's a question that maybe we didn't answer, uh, we can get to, and uh, and see if we can get those knocked out. Is Auto Squelch somehow adjustable for low talkers? Um, I I suppose. Uh, I mean, is it adjustable for low talkers? No. I mean, again, with di with digital squelches, it, it's either it's either on or it's off. Um, that would be mic sensitivity, uh, which is going to be a function of your audio panel, depending on, on what that is. Uh, when will the email replay be sent? Immediately after this. As soon as I, I end this webinar and uh, GoToWebinar does its thing, kind of packaging it up in a, into a nice little uh, replay package, you're going to get an email. I'm going to get an email uh, for the webinar replay, and then we'll have that available on our different platforms online as well. Are there trade-up programs for the GNS 4.3? I think Brian's getting you getting that answer for you there. Anything extra required for interfacing with the S Tech 50? I would have to check and see. I'm going to say no, not off the top of my head. Um, it, if you were doing the S Tech 50, I do believe that is in our uh, interactive install manual. So that's really just a matter of uh, looking at your individual install, looking at the pinouts and, and seeing what's different between that and the interface in the IM as well. And then just making those changes that need to be made. Uh, I, I don't I don't expect there to be uh, anything major there. The biggest change really gets into uh, what type of autopilot that it is and whether or not it's talking to a PFD. Uh, that's really where the biggest changes come from there. Uh, if we put in a, a, a PFD like an Aspen, uh, now, a lot of times we're not going right from the navigator to the autopilot. We're going from the navigator to the PFD to the autopilot, and that's a whole different uh, wiring setup there. Is there any major benefit in the meantime to choose 550 instead of the 540? Well, it's 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 preference, right? We give you there's there's six different options of the IFD to choose from. Uh, the 550, of course, has that uh, added uh, page, that, that attitude reference sensor. I think is an, it is an absolute uh, game changer, um, and it gives you another level of redundancy in your aircraft, another level of safety. Um, I think it's absolutely worth it, um, but your, 
your installation and, and your preferences may vary. So uh, speak with a dealer, um, get as much information as you can, get an informed decision on that um, and, and see what kind of works out for you, what, what works best for you. You guys have done a fantastic job answering these questions in the chat. Uh, here's a great one. Uh, Alfredo, 440 has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but if the iPad connects via Wi-Fi, then it won't connect to a Century. In that case, best to connect with Bluetooth correct. No. Um, <clears throat> the IFD will connect and bring in traffic and weather over Wi-Fi only. Remember that the Bluetooth is and the 440 is only meant for uh, the Mark 10 keyboard. So if we are interfacing with any uh, third party, any wireless ADSB receivers, that's going to be over a Wi-Fi connection. Um, and even then, the Sentry, because it's got it's got a couple of different things, we we don't claim to work with the the uh, Sentry. Um, uses a slightly different protocol. Um, as far as uh, how that information is sent over. Um, so uh, uh, just a short list of, of what we do work with is the uh, the Stratus 3, um, a number of the wireless iLevel products. Uh, we'll take that in because it's a lot of the same information over the same uh, port settings and, and the different uh, capstone settings that are sent over wireless. <clears throat> Does the EX5000 show synthetic vision? Not, not the exocentric like the uh, IFD does. However, I would just add, um, if, it, if this is a serious uh, question, uh, obviously with our Vantage coming out um, soon, then Vantage will have 3D synthetic vision. I think that about that about covers it. Um, all right, guys. I, I appreciate all of you guys coming out. If, uh, if if we still get some some questions coming in, we'll we'll attack those um, as we go. But uh, thank you guys so much for for spending your Thursday with me. I know there's there's plenty of other things that you could be doing out there, but I'm really glad that you spent the last hour or so with me. Um, this webinar will be available for replay. Um, immediately after this, check your inbox, and then we'll have them blasted out to the different uh, online platforms here shortly. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for hanging out, and we'll see you guys in the next webinar. Have a good day.